And a pleasant good evening, everybody. Welcome into a Halloween Monday on the Bears Coaches Show with head coach Matt Eberflus. I'm Jeff Joniak with you until 8 o'clock tonight here on News Radio 105.9 WBBM. Uh, flight back, watching the tape, Matt, a full day of breaking it down with the team. Uh, what conclusions uh, did you arrive at in all three phases, if you could go through it for us? Yeah, so we, you know, obviously watched it on the plane ride home uh, last night and then this morning and had the team meeting uh, with the players. And then uh, we got a chance to watch it with the players uh, during our, our unit meetings. And then we had to walk through at the end to clean up all the stuff that we needed to clean up. And uh, really, so obviously a rough start for the defense, you know, uh, coming out, uh, didn't uh, execute like we wanted to on first and second down to get them into third down and manageables. Um, and when we did, they executed better than we did, you know, in those situations. And, and those, that's why we always talk to the guys about how third down is so important to be able to get off those, get off the field to stop a drive. And we have to execute in those critical moments. Uh but again, I thought the offense, you know, they started with a three and out, but, uh, you know, I had a couple three and outs during the course of the day, but really all day long executed really well. Um, they ran the ball really well against a, a very good defense. Um, we're able to get some chunk plays in the passing game on some movement passes and some shots that we took um, and did a nice job on third down, you know, and, and that showed. And, uh, you know, so we put ourselves in a bind, put ourselves in a hole, but we were able to, as a, as a football team, get ourselves back in it. Um, you know, at the end of the half, you know, we scored that touchdown and then uh, Eddie Jackson had the interception um, and did a nice job of putting us back into scoring range. And we only got a field goal out of that, but it drew us within 11 points uh, to go at intermission there. So that was a positive. And we talked to the guys at halftime and said, hey, guys, we're only 11 points down. Offense gets the ball back and we got a chance to, to, to do this thing. And and we were, we were excited about that opportunity. So we traded punts in the third quarter. Um, then our offense went down and scored. Um, to bring it within five points, uh, which was really good. And uh, we went for two. Uh, we didn't get it. And, uh, you know, so we, we were still uh, down by five. And that was the critical moment, I thought, that the defense right there really had to step up. And we jumped off sides. They threw, um, you know, a triple seam down the middle, um, got that, had a couple more nice plays, and then scored on us. And then that's when the momentum shifted. Next drive by the offense, we had, uh, you know, the fumble. On third down, they recovered it and scored a touchdown. That was a 14-point swing right there in the middle of the third quarter. So, um, but it was you know, guys fought really hard. We put ourselves in a chance to to, to win the game um, early in that third quarter there, and uh, we just didn't get it done. We got to execute better as a football team. You know, Justin uh, took some responsibility for not touching Micah Parsons on that fumble, uh, but it could have been any number of guys, any number of guys. And uh, I know this is a weird concept, and I think Tevin Jenkins even – admitted it at one point now that turnovers are celebrated with a camera in the end zone you could honestly see where players might ease off a little bit thinking he was down you pick up everybody goes to the end zone to celebrate I know a coach doesn't want to hear that but because of this new thing that's been going on yeah just... I just think we got to do our jobs there because you, know, you got to touch him down there were several guys there there was a couple of linemen right there to touch him down I, I think uh, Harry might have been close by so we certainly got to do that and if he pops up, we got to tackle him. You know, we got to tackle him, put him on the ground. So we got to do a better job executing that. Um, was it a bad loaf game overall? You know, I didn't see a lot of loafs. You know, we're we're pretty critical on that. I thought guys were were playing hard. And again, it's just about assignment football and being in the right position, trusting the guy next to you. And uh, we have to do that better. All right, let's talk about Justin's performance now. The last two weeks, thirty for forty four, three thirty, three touchdowns, one interception and 142 rushing yards and two touchdowns. It's really a three-week window of just climbing up that staircase, but uh, those are winning numbers right there. For yeah, they certainly are, and he's getting more comfortable. Um, you know, I think that uh, mini buy helped us, you know, to really, uh, you know, accentuate his skills um, and also minimize some of the things that we needed to, um, you know, in terms of getting a pocket protection and doing a good job with movement passes and, and I think that uh, the offensive staff has done a really good job with that. And and he's just getting more comfortable, you know, in the pocket. He's getting having better presence back there. Uh, his platform's been great. Um, his movement's been great. He's been getting the ball out of his hands on the quick throws. Um, so he's growing before our eyes, and we're excited about that. One thing that sticks out, at least from my perspective, that when guys are coming at him now, and maybe it's just by virtue of so many that he's had to deal with because he's a mobile quarterback, he just seems to be calmer when they're coming. He's not overreacting one way or another. Uh, do you sense the same thing, and how much of an impact does that make on a defense, especially when you think he's going to go over the line, you know, and he's thinking, and you know, he's making right. moves like a point guard? 
No, that's hard. You know, that's hard. You know, when you, when a quarterback can can evade the rush and keep his eyes down the field to strike deep uh, for you know scrambling scramble rules for our receivers, and has the, also has the ability to run as well. That's a double threat. Do you do you think his skill right now and the way he's playing triggers a defender to have some doubt what to do, or their first step is always to him? Yeah, you can see that for sure. When he gets on the perimeter, uh, he's obviously fast, and he's able to get uh, evade the rush and, and move in the pocket, so he's doing a great job with that. You hit 200-plus rushing again. Uh, you'll love this, the history of the game. Four and eight games hasn't happened since the 1958 Cleveland Browns did it five times. Right. So uh, you were aware of that, apparently. So uh, just amazing production in the run game, and, and you mentioned earlier today it's all 11. It's, all, it's everybody black, and we keep bringing it up every week, but this is who, who the Bears are for 2022. Yeah, it, it is, and, and uh, we're, you know, we're definitely uh, hanging on to that because that, that's a uh, way we establish our identity, and uh, it's important for us to be able to run the football. Um, it's all 11 of us. Uh, the, like I said in the press conference earlier, it's the receivers, it's the tight ends, it's the offensive line jumping to the second level, it's Justin carrying out his fakes, um, it's everybody, you know. It's car. It's blasting game. You know, leading the way. It's the two runners. You know, you know, splitting two and getting their yeah. pads down. The two different styles, and also really, you know, having that third element of the quarterback. The quarterback can run and scramble at the same time, and he gives you a, a good number of yards too. How about doing that, but still, you know, five different offensive line configurations in eight games. Yeah. But, I mean, and you're still getting that kind That's of run a, production. Yeah, really just, uh, you know, attributed to the guys. You know, the players do a great job of, of paying attention, of, of, of learning the positions, multiple positions, and uh, it's to the coaches. You know, Chris Morgan, Austin King, it does a great job. How would you think Riley Reef handled his job? He did He did wonderful. You know, he plays so hard and did a really good job in there. He executed well. And Cody Whitehair can potentially come off IR. Uh, this week, start that window, so that would be another boost. Yeah, you get Cody, you get maybe potentially Larry, so you get a couple Larry guys Barnett. back, you know, and then and Pringle, and Pringle's got a chance to come back, so we got some decisions to make here this week, and uh, we're excited about that. All right, very good. One segment down here on the Bears Coaches Show on this Monday evening with Coach Eberflus. You're one of the lucky ones. You were born a Bears fan. Your dad insists on being called the dad. Your Sunday best is always blue and orange. The only thing your dad asks when he meets your sister's boyfriend is if he's a Bears fan. Dad! What? I deserve to know. And Sunday dinner is always eaten around a pop tailgate with a couple hundred people that you think of like family. Got another brat ready for you. You're one of the lucky ones. And now you're even luckier because with the Chicago Bears PNC Bank Visa debit card, you can get special discounts on certain Bears merch and on concessions. It pays off to have passion for your team. Show you're a Bears fan from the gear you wear to the card you carry in your wallet. PNC Bank, passion pays. For details on discounts and other offers, visit pnc.com slash Bears card. Visa is a registered trademark of Visa International Service Association and used under license. Copyright 2021 PNC Bank National Association member FDIC. The Bears Coaches Show with Matt Eberflus and WBBM's Jeff Joniak continues. Bears go to work here, second and four, the 10-yard line of the Cowboys. One back and big guys up front. Snap, play fake, looking to throw, field, going to the end zone. Cole Komet, touchdown, touchdown Bears. There you go, baby. And as he was a former baseball player at Notre Dame, he just took a pitch, swung the big stick for the home run. Welcome back to the Bears Coaches Show here at Hallis Hall with Bears head coach Matt Eberflus. Just heard the Justin Fields touchdown throw to Cole Komet, a red zone touchdown. Uh, red zone was good yesterday. A hundred catches between touchdowns for Cole. Yeah. I know he's been he's been dying. He's been telling me he had a celebration planned. It was a simple, you know, take a swing. I don't know if you saw it. He took a, took a home run swing there. But uh, finally success in the red zone in that fourth quarter yesterday. Break down that play for us and what it means because – he can he can do this. He can do this. He could be a weapon in your red zone. Well, I want to give a shout out first of all to Patrick Scales. It was his hundredth game yesterday. So if you're oh, talking about one hundred, okay, but, okay. Uh, you know Cole um, obviously he's been working really hard. Um, you know that play there was it was a really good play. You know it was is a run fake to him. You know where he would block and then go to the corner, and uh, it was a well well thrown ball. It was really was it was well executed by Justin and Cole. Um, and, and a perfect fake. Did you see him as a red zone weapon? He's got the ruggedness to fight through traffic. Uh, he's um, somebody that uh, you know hasn't had that many opportunities really in his career in the red zone. 
Yeah, I, I really do. I think big receivers, uh, you know, tight ends, fullbacks, they should show up in the red zone, you know, in the tight red and the, and the higher red because they're bigger bodies. You know, certainly the tight ends and receivers that have those bigger bodies and you don't have to throw them open. They're always open. You know, they can use their body to, to ward off rece- uh, defenders and then big box them and then be able to catch the ball with strength. And I think that's important in the red zone. And with every time there's a microphone in his face, he talks about his blocking first. He, he takes pride in it. He's worked at it for a while. He thinks he's always been better than maybe people anticipated him to be. And uh, it's important to him. What have you seen in that side of things? Yeah, really the tight end group in general. You know, they've been doing a really nice job. You know, Wesco himself, you know, has, has done a great job. Griff has done a great job. You know, and then Cole. You know, Cole's leading that group. And he's been blocking really well at the point of attack. Um, he's been winning his blocks there. On the, on the backside, he's been cutting off really well, jumping to the second level when he can. And uh, he's finishing his blocks. You know, just like he finishes his runs on those screens and the, and the intermediate passes and the short passes that he gets, uh, he's a finisher and he does a good job. Uh, scoring up this week in the NFL, we talked about it last week. It was down, but uh, eight, uh, excuse me, 14 teams hit 26 or more points, including the Bears. Does that signal anything to you? Um, I think it's a conspiracy in the league, <laughs> but uh, no, I'm just teasing. But I, I do think that it's a, uh, you know, it goes ebbs and flows. I mean, you know, in 2020, the scoring was up, you know, and then a couple years before that, it was down. So it ebbs and flows as we go. And uh, and again, we just take one game at a time. Maybe it has something to do, though, just with training camp and how things are nowadays in the NFL, that it t- takes all this time or new coaching staff. You know, some there's been there was a lot of changes in the NFL this season to get ramped up. Yeah, I mean, there's a Maybe. continuity piece to that for sure. You know, with uh, the group, you know, working together and getting their gel on, and, that, and certainly that's uh, that happens with new staffs for sure. So Justin's a weapon. His arm's a weapon. You mentioned that as well. The deep ball coming off of play action, boots, whatever. Uh, the opportunities were there yesterday on several occasions to make uh, a big play. Right. Uh, are you feeling now? that this can be parlayed into big plays, more and more opportunities to do this. Yeah, I do. I do think so. And I think we got to keep being creative, um, you know, on offense and make sure we do a good job of, of distributing the ball to, to everybody on the team. I think that that's, makes it hard to defend. Um, and really uh, stressing all the parts of the field, the vertical parts, the horizontal parts, the middle parts, make sure we do that in our passing game because it's hard to defend every blade of grass. And uh, I think that's what our offense needs to do. And, and that's what we've been talking about with those guys. You know, a guy like Velas, uh, that, that's a catch that he, he could have made, he should have made probably, you could say. It's not that it's not challenging, but uh, how do you keep that man's confidence going given what happened on punts and now, you know, dropping a touchdown pass potentially? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, you know confidence is really is, is through preparation. You know, so keep preparing, get extra work, you know, do a good job uh, in practice, and that's where I think you foster confidence. Khalil Herbert taking advantage of every opportunity right now. Uh, he's putting up some really good numbers. Again, he hit his league average at 6.2, a season average 6.2, which is tops in the league. And he keeps breaking off a big chunk uh, almost in every game. He had a 36-yarder yesterday, including that uh, the touchdown that we'll, right. we'll hear about later. But uh, just to kind of put into a context what, what he means right now to this team. Yeah, I mean, both guys, you know, Herbert, you know, Demo, both do a great job. It's great to have the one-two punch there, and they'll, they'll be the first to tell you it's about the offensive line and the tight ends and the receivers. It's all 11. They're a piece of that, and it's really good to have the one-two punch there. Different styles, right, but certainly Herbert does a nice job. He did a nice job yesterday with his average, um, and he has great cutback ability. He can take capture the edge with his speed, but, his, again, his vision is really, really good. Well, yeah, three prong. It's not two. No, it's three. Yeah. You know, Bobby Douglas, a record is there for the taking for Justin. He's approaching that. You know, 979 yards, I think, was Bobby Douglas's single-season rushing record at quarterback. Uh, would that be a good news thing or not so good news if you want if you want to look at it that yeah, way? Yeah, I think if it's done in the right way. You know, again, he's our quarterback, so we got to be safe and we got to make sure he, we do it the right way um, creatively. All right, that's Matt Eberflus here on the Bears Coaches Show. Snap back. Field looking to throw. Touchdown! Caught at the one. Nikhil Harry carries in the defender into the end zone. And the Bears, with 40 seconds to go in the first half, get a very, very badly needed touchdown. Fields on the strike on one-on-one man coverage.
Calling all Bears fans. Get the ultimate VIP fan package with Chicago Bears VIP. Secure a game ticket and appearance from Bears legends and more by visiting ChicagoBearsVIP.com. Just heard the throw. Justin Fields and Keel Harry. And welcome back to the Bears Coaches Show with Matt Eberflus. How about that one? Uh, Ten on the field. Recognize it. Boom. Zero and throw. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was you know, we were going, you know, in and out pretty fast there. And, uh, you know, our substitution must have uh, threw them off. I think they may have been, had an injury uh, to one of their corners and they didn't sub in. So they had, we got them with 10 on the field there and they recognized it. You know, we saw the matchup that they had on the inside receiver, which was Harry. And he ran a nice route and, uh, and it was great. He, he provided leverage, you know, on the, on the coverage. And he was open on the inside, and Justin did a nice job of delivering the ball. It's a grip it and rip it, see it and throw it. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, is it, it that simple? It, it was, and we had a, we had a protection on in that particular case where it was you know we had you know the, the tight end and the back were in protection, so it was a nice pocket um, there, and uh, he did a nice job of delivering the ball. To me, the bigger story about that play is one play earlier, he throws the interception to Diggs but he was clobbered on the play. You get the flag, and he comes right back and delivers a money shot. Yeah. I mean, He's got to say something We've there. said this before. You know, Justin is a tough, tough guy, and uh, he can he can certainly do the, these these amazing things on the field, and we see that. And uh, one of the things he is amazing is he, he is tough. and He can come right back um, after a long run or after you know, he might take a hit, and it doesn't phase him. And he does a really good job of recentering himself, re- recomposure, in the huddle, take command, and then moving on to the next play. He does, he does a great job of that. And that includes something like that, throwing because the interception came first. Yeah. He really does a good job of, t- of cycle of the snap, turn the page. One, one, it's one play, turn the page to the next one, and then go to the next one, and then go to the next one. And at the end of the, end of the day, you're going to sit there and you know, you're know you going to read your book. How was it? How did I execute on each play? And uh, he does a really good job of that. And that's what you got to do as a quarterback. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent. We're moving on to the next play. We got to keep going. Forty-five days, uh, forty-five snap day for Nikhil Harry. So he got a substantial amount of, of uh, playing time. Do you believe the targets will increase for him as well with that playing time as he absorbs uh, this playbook? Yeah, like we said, we want to distribute the ball evenly to everybody. So we want to make sure that we keep on doing that. And certainly, Nikhil Harry is part of that plan. First snap, uh, the underthrow to Equiminius St. Brown. Just put a little air on it. I know he probably wants that one back in a big way. Yeah, both guys did a great job running the routes. You know, uh, Mooney was on the other side. EQ was on the one side. They both did a really good job. Both were open, and uh, yeah, he's got to let that one fly. And uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure he wants that one back for sure. Justin, after the game, also admitted to having some sore legs after playing two games in, you know, six days. Uh, but that's the NFL life a few times this season. Um, how, how significant is that, though? Just to recognize what's going on, you play through it, and that's also no, that also defines professionalism and leadership. Yeah, I talked to with the performance team about that. You know, there, there is something to that. You play two games on turf in six days, and you're in a plane. You know, so there's there's some things that are there. So we're gonna we'll do some things on Wednesday uh, for the guys to get their legs back for Thursday, Friday, and then we'll get them running on Sunday. So around the league, we've mentioned this for several weeks now, but that was a five game month he just finished. Yep. And would you say that the arc for Justin and the offense has elevated significantly in this just one month. Yeah, I would say that. I would say for our football team, I think the arc is going up, you know, because, you know, you can see that, you know, we played a more complete game on Monday night against the Patriots. Uh, I thought we had, you know, offense, defense, and kicking. I thought we've been, we were solid. And there's been times earlier in the month that, you know, the defense was playing well and the offense didn't play that great or special teams maybe had a snafu with those, you know, the punts, you know, uh, returns and all that. So we're just trying to put a complete game together where offense, defense, and kicking are doing a great job of – it's never going to be perfect, but they're doing a good job of executing more consistently on, on a down-in and down-out basis. And when you have that, you're going to have a good product on the field. You're, I think you're a speed guy. You you notice it. You like it. Uh, you see it when it's there, right, everywhere. Um, Justin ran – I don't know which one they're talking about, but Next Gen Stats said he had a 21.23 mile per hour run in the game, the tenth fastest this season in the league, and the tops in Week Eight. Do you feel his speed when you're standing on the sideline? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. You can see, you can feel it when he when he evades the rush, or when he's on one of his quarterback runs, when people try to close on him and he just runs away from him. So um, he's got a really good knack for that. Uh, he's got a really good knack for faking where he's going and then take capturing the edge. Or just gassing people up the middle, so he's uh, he's special that way for sure. 
Go back to the uh, the Parsons thing. So he leaps over him. Uh, unbelievable athletic move, if you ask me. That's a tr- tricky I mean, one. No, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of people there. Okay. Yeah. First of all, I want to say, you know, thank you to Justin for hustling like he did. Because yeah. he was hustling there. You don't see many quarterbacks He was do the that. first man there. You know, mm-hmm. so he knows he's just got to finish that off. But, man, he was there to do it. And then we had a couple other guys there to do it as well. So, we, you know, it's all 11 of us. We all saw the play. We all got to do our job and get them down either by touching or by tackling. Our C.D. Lamb back to throw in a tight pocket. Oh! It's intercepted. Eddie Jackson on it at the 35-yard line. At the numbers, breaks a tackle with the 30, spitting to the 25. Now there, you're in business. Bears have taken the ball away with 28 seconds to go in the first half. Great seats available to see your Chicago Bears this season at Soldier Field. Get your tickets at chicagobears.com slash tickets. Welcome back to the Bears Coaches Show with head coach Matt Eberflus. The 14th interception of Eddie Jackson's career, fourth this season. He's got a share of the lead with three other guys. Just amazing. How does a player go 30 games without one and then get four in his first eight? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, he's got the ball skills. Yeah. He's got, you know... I guess I know you don't agree with this, some of the luck thing when it comes to turnovers and takeaways, but maybe some of it just it didn't bounce his way. Uh, but boy, uh, he's sure, sure ball hawking now. No, he's and, and I was I was you know I was kind of being funny there. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But really, I'm just saying that you know Eddie's done a great job of, all the way through training camp. You know, he's put the work in. Um, he's been amazing every single day in practice, um, and he's been the same guy every day. Works hard. Um, he's disciplined. And he's buying into the system, and he's done a really good job of helping Jaquan Brisker. You know, so he's having a, g- a good year too, and uh, he's been a really good pro for us. And uh, we can't say enough good things about Eddie. And, and and the ball's coming his way. And a lot of times, football will pay off for you when you put it all out there. It'll pay you back, and that's what the football is doing for him right now. It'll pay you back in in opportunities. Yes, sir. It'll put you in the right position at the right time every single time. Eleven tackles, also. Now, there's an old, you know, if it's a cliche, I've heard it a thousand, eh, you know. Okay, he led him with 11 tackles. Brisker had nine. Those were your two top tacklers. Ah, that's that's not good when your, your secondary is making tackles. How do you look at it? Because uh, I still think you got to make the play, so whoever makes the play makes the play. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times your safeties are the leading tacklers. You know, at times there's a lot of perimeter play. That can happen, but certainly you want your your, your inside backers to be the lead dogs on that and that stat for sure. But uh, and we've had that over the course of the, these eight games. But, uh, but, yeah, he did a nice job in the open field when the ball came in there. Plus you're saving bigger plays, you know, from happening. Right. Last line of defense type of thing. Um, and then how do you like when he comes down in the box? And, you know, there was a play, you know, it turned out to be a touchdown, unfortunately, by Pollard when he came in there, uh, almost got, nicked him up and, and slowed it down on the 56-yard run, came out of pressure. But right. um, is that – how beneficial is that for you? And, and, and we could talk about Brisker in the same fashion because he's getting a lot there at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, so, you know, obviously we're disappointed in those runs that Pollard had. We had to do a better job executing for sure, but, uh, you know – uh, Eddie played, you know, a decent game last night. You know, he did a nice job, with, obviously, with the interception, the ball hawk, and then also the 11 tackles. And I think that, you know, there's a couple situations in there where we, we got to run the alley. That means you got to run inside out on the ball carrier. And then when you get near him, you got to get into a shuffle and then back to a sprint so you're under control so you can make the tackle. All right, let's talk Brisker. Um, again, you're, you're mentioning the impact of Eddie on him as well. Nine tackles, stop for no gain in the third. Uh, that was the only punt that Dallas had in the game. He had another run stop for a yard, had the sack. So now he's got three sacks. Mike Brown, Mike Green back in 01. That was my first season as play-by-play. Uh, they had three sacks each. Well, what's making him uh, do his thing right now? And he's getting conversation out there for defensive rookie of the year consideration. Yeah, I think he's just buying into the system. He does a really good job, of, have, has learned it really well. Um, the, the coaches have done a good job of coaching him, getting him ready. And, you know, he's a natural playmaker. You know, he's, he he's a, likes to hit. He's a good tackler. Um, he's got good ball skills, which you saw the other night. And uh, he's just going to continue to grow. What made Pollard so difficult to stop yesterday? He's a good back. He's a good back. But a lot of that's, uh, you know, and we're going to give him his credit, but uh, a lot of that was on us. You know, we got to execute better. we got to be where we're supposed to be. And we got to trust our teammate next to us. And when we do that, we have good plays. And we just need more consistent execution out of that group. Does it? Do you feel the defense is bothered by this? Uh, the amount of yards rushing they've given up, thirty-first in the league. Are you bothered by it? Sometimes the other guy wins. No, it is that simple. It really is. If we if we play our fundamentals and techniques and we play them with with violence, I think you know we will execute the right way. 
I know we will. And that's that's an important thing. And we've been, you know, in the top five in our league in rush defense many years in this system. And uh, we know what it's supposed to look like, and we're committed to it. And we just have to do a better job of consistently executing. Fakes and hands off. Herbert on the cutback to the 10, to the 5. Oh, the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, Bears. Ready, set, and go to any Jewel Osco for freshness at your fingertips with every handoff. Get everything from produce and meat to deli treats and more. Welcome back to the Bears Coaches Show with Bears head coach Matt Eberflus. Just heard the Khalil Herbert 12-yard touchdown run. Every time he's touching the ball, can't wait to see what's next. So that one. Break that one down for you. Yeah, that, that was a really nice play, and it was it was well blocked by the offensive line, and it was an ability to you know zone play, and he just read the linebackers going over the top, and he just cut it back. He, he does a great job with that, and have good ability to cut back is you have to press the line of scrimmage. Like if you cut back too soon, the linebackers will cut back with you. So you have to press the ball if you're going front side, and then what he did a nice job of was just put his left foot in the ground and just cut it right up. And what's great about Khalil is that he has square shoulders when he comes through the line of scrimmage. He's getting north, and he does it in a hurry. So um, that was a really nice run for him and well blocked by the offense. Going back to the 36-yarder, uh, I think it what was the game back at Soldier Field uh, a couple weeks back who were we playing when he when he made the big the big 64-yarder? Washington, Washington yep. a similar situation happened where he slant, started slanting towards the middle of the field and found daylight. Yeah. Um, is that just the vision that he's got? Yes, it's instincts and vision. It really is, and then he's got great cut ability uh, to really take it out the front side and also cut it back. So if David Montgomery ran for 300 yards yesterday but fumbled the football, he would be miserable the rest of the day. He takes every snap seriously. Um, have you have you seen him? Have you talked to him? Because it, it, it bothers him when, when stuff like this happens, um, maybe more than other players I've ever seen. No, he's he's certainly aware of it. Uh, it he's a, He's got a high character. Um, he takes his job very seriously, and he knows his job is to protect the football and protect the franchise with that ball, so with protecting that football. So um, I saw him after the game, got a chance to talk to him, and uh, he's in a good spot. You know, he's moving forward, um, and uh, he's going to get better this week. You know, you have a, uh, a really good gift of focusing on, as you, you always say, we're going to build on the positives, and yet that doesn't mean we don't have things to work on or negatives. How do you keep that frame of mind when you've been in every game this year, mm-hmm. could have one snap here, one snap there, a different outcome despite the youth of this football team, despite what others may feel about what you have in terms of talent comparatively to other teams. Um, how do you frame that? How do you put that all in context to, to focus on that aspect of things while you're trying to get better at the same time? Yeah, it's really about, uh, you know, the thing we talked about from the very beginning, you know, the, you know, the performance is the performance, you know, win by 20, lose by five, whatever that might be, we need to learn from each performance to get better. And that that's the mantra we've been talking to the players about. And it's the coach and player's responsibility to learn from each performance of what that guy needs to improve on. And it's a partnership going forward into the week, into Monday after you view, view the film, Tuesday when you start studying your opponent, and then all the way into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday when you practice. And it all starts for us in the individual period. We can focus on those fundamentals and techniques to get those guys better. And if we can do that with each individual player in each unit, we're going to see a good product on the field get better and improve. Um, you'll see younger players get better. You'll see older players improve. You'll see quarterbacks start to understand and gel what, what they need to do and how they need to do it. You'll see defensive backs improve. You'll see defense alignment, offense alignment, which we've had all these young guys on our team improve throughout the course of the year. And that's really because of, the, of our mental attitudes towards improvement. And the guys have done a wonderful job of that. We are improving. We are getting better. Look across the board. we got a lot of young players getting better every single week, and we're excited about that improvement. Have you seen anybody hang their head here? No. No, I've seen guys get upset, you know, and, and that's and they should. You know, that's part of the 24-hour rule. When you, you lose a game or a tight game and – and it's you should be upset, and uh, and it's not okay to lose. We want to win every single game, but after that performance, twenty four hours is over. You now have to look at it a different way. How can I get better? How can I improve to win the next game? And that's it. that's what we need to do. You ever have a guy say, okay, if he keeps doing the same thing, say it's gap gap control. Okay, he's not in his gap. Maybe he's biting on the eye candy or whatever because there's a lot of you know a lot of that going on in the league. Obviously, Dallas Minnesota game. Uh, Giants, uh, and he just tells you, I, I just can't do it. I can't do it that way. 
Does that ever happen? Um, no, I don't think it does because we show them how and why. We show them many examples of the guys in the past doing it the right way. So we have, uh, you know, uh, measurables for each position, you know, three technique, right feet, right defensive end, left defensive end, nose tackle, will linebacker, Mike, you know, center, guard, tackle, left tackle, right tackle, tight end. So we know what they're supposed to look like and we know what the positions entail um, in terms of their fundamentals and techniques. So we have plenty of tape to show them from years past of our systems on offense, defense, and kicking of how guys got it done at the same size, at the same skill level as the person that's doing it now. So th- those are beneficial for us um, to show those guys that tape. And uh, they like looking at it because it's history of the game, history of our systems that we have employed. So uh, that's an easy, easy sell for us. Welcome back to the Bears Coaches Show with Matt Eberflus. One more segment to go coming up in this segment as well. We'll take a look at next week's opponent, the Miami Dolphins. Okay, so you traded Robert Quinn last week, so snaps went up for some of your defensive linemen. You got some guys uh, like um, Kingsley Jonathan's feet wet a little bit in this one. I, I had the stats like Muhammad, 83% of the snaps, Gibson, 67, Robinson, 36, Jonathan, 16%. I think he had nine. Uh, as that, uh, as you look at that, um, how do you think that group performed? And did the extra playing time help everybody get a better picture of what is expected of each of them moving forward? Yeah, I think they were solid uh, at times, but but need to improve. You know, when you have a defensive performance the way we did, I don't think anybody played good, um, to be honest with you. So, we have to do a better job at the defensive line level, the linebacker level. We've got to do a better job in the secondary. So, um, you know, we're, we're looking for big improvement from that group um, as well as D-tackle as well. So, you know, it's just about the fundamental techniques of, you know, it's basically was reach blocking, base blocking, and cutoff for those defensive ends. So um, they have to play those things better um, with, their, with their hands and be able to shed the blocks to make the tackles when needed. Um, so that's going to be a big part of our, of our work this week. With Robinson, I mean, he's – Man, you can make a case he's played more offensive snaps in his life than defense. Uh, how big a challenge is this for this guy? Even though he's uniquely gifted, just born that way with the body, the length, speed, everything you can imagine. Yeah, we're happy where he is. But, uh, you know, he's a work in progress uh, right now. But uh, um, he's made a lot of nice plays for us. Um, and he's learned his technique. And he's like any other rookie, you know. So if it's Kyler, if it's Jaquan, if it's Braxton, those guys are all learning on the job, and and it's important that he keeps learning and keeps growing, but also produces. You know, for our football team as we go along here, his reps will be increased because you know of our loss of Robert, and uh, he's going to have to step up and, and produce for us. You and I have talked about this when he goes inside. How's he? Fe- uh, he says it's you know things happen quicker. It's one step versus two, as he tried to explain it uh, earlier today. I think it was uh, just. Uh, how he works inside and that length to maybe uh, cloud some windows of, of throwing lanes with his hands. Yeah, certainly in passing downs, we'll put him on the inside there. We had him in some odd looks the other day where he was a stand-up guy that was moving around a little bit. So we're going to you know, create some different ways for him to rush and some different spots for him to be effective for our defense. So uh, we'll continue to do that for sure in the future. With young guys on defense in particular, eyes and trusting your eyes and let, don't let them deceive you, the biggest and most important aspect of playing defensive football yeah we, you know the keys are really your eyes you know and where are your eyes and why so uh, what your what is your key progression you know for example for a defensive end his first key is his man on key which is the tip of the shoulder of the tackle on the outside so that's his first key run pass you know he feels the ball gets off on the ball but that's his first key if it's pass sets you pass rush if it goes down you close um, if it comes at you, you you set your hands on the fan block so it's it's to me that's where the eye discipline is. It's no different than playing linebacker or playing defensive back. The farther you get away from the ball, the larger your keys are, the more wide your camera gets. Okay, the closer you're, you're to the ball, the more narrow your eyes are. So if a defensive tackle, man, his eyes are right in front of the center, that's his keys, key in the tip of the center. Same thing with the defensive end on the tackle. What if the offensive line is so good they don't tip that off? No, they all tip it off. <laughs> I love it. No, they all tip it off. And if they do. Is if they're really good, I mean, it's hard, isn't it cha- more challenging if you got a really, really good offensive line? No, I think that the really good offensive lines, they know exactly what they're doing and how they're doing it, and they they'll tell you they're running, and they're still going to run it, and they tell you they're pass, they're still going to pass it. You know, that's why you got to build your team through the offense and defensive lines. I think that's paramount for our future here at the Chicago Bears. What did you think of the play of the cornerbacks? It was good. It was good. I thought Jalen Jalen played solid. Uh, you know. 
I, I thought, you know, uh, Kendall played good, uh, played solid. Uh, Gordon, you know, did okay at times. But like I said, you know, when you when you play the way we did as a unit on yeah. defense, no one played great. Um, you know, some guys were solid, and uh, we certainly need to improve in every aspect of that group. What, what's the key? Because Vildor said that, you know, maybe I gave a little bit too much cushion on the slant. Is that fair, or do you ask them to be specific on defending the slant? I, I just think it's alignments. You know, where where is the corner re- relative to the receiver based on the receiver's alignment? If he's wide plus three outside the numbers, where should he be? You know, if he's inside the numbers, where should I be? Relative to the coverage we have called. So our alignments, I think, have got to be better and we got to make sure we're doing the right things with the coverage we have based on the splits of the receivers. Okay, time to look ahead. Brought to you by Bet Rivers, the official sports book partner of the Bears. Dolphins 5-3 and three after a four-point win in Detroit. They came back, Matt, twice from 14 nothing deficits, not unlike uh, the Bears yesterday, uh, but managed to get the win. Uh, a lot to dig into on their offense. The two big play receivers, it's, it's probably going to be one of the biggest challenges of the year. Those two have already piled up almost 1,700 yards. And that's more than 10 different NFL teams just with those two guys. Yeah, they certainly are putting some big numbers up. And they've thrown for 300-plus yards a few games now. And, you know, Hill and Waddle, those guys are really dynamic. And Gusecki, the the tight end, can certainly get open. They use him as a receiver as well. So, um, And then Tua's been really delivering the ball. You know, you can see a change with the coach. I think the coach has done a really good job. Uh, Coach McDaniel's done a nice job with with Tua in that offense. And it's going to be a big challenge for our defense coming up. Uh, how do you deal with that kind of speed of Tariq Hill? Yeah, you just got to be on top. You got to make sure you got guys on top of them. Uh, if it's a corner and a safety or a safety in a corner, uh, make sure you're doing uh, your due diligence with his speed because he is a game changer. Is he playing – well, I don't know how much tape you've been able to watch yet, but is he playing different than he did in KC system? Uh, because he seems to be getting a lot more targets, number one. Uh, gosh, they're talking about him you know, potentially on pace to – set the all-time record for receiving yards. He's already almost 1,000 yards already. Right, yeah. They're using him in a lot of good ways. He's obviously very fast. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with him. You know, you can throw, you know, over outs, you know, deep balls. He digs, you know, he does a great job on in cuts, and you can use him on jet sweeps, jet sweeps and, and some underneath throws and screens. So uh, he's been he's a very dynamic player, and he's been a dynamic player in this league for a long time. Well, you know about their defense uh, run by Josh Boyer. They didn't give up any uh, second-half points yesterday in just 67 yards. No, I think they're an aggressive group. You know, they're a well tackling group. I think they're well coached, and, and Coach Boyer's been doing a really good job with those guys. Javon Holland, outstanding safety. Xavier Howard, outstanding corner. Yeah, they got some good skill, and they got some good skill up front. Boy, the Miami, but you'll be home after four four trips out of five. Won't that feel good a little bit? Hey, for your guys too. It'll be good to be home in front of our in front yeah. of our fans. So it's going to be good. Yeah, back to back weeks. All right, thank you so much. Good luck this week. All right, thank you. I'm going to wrap it up by saying thanks to Keith Johnson, Andy Gersher, Dan Brilly, Jordan Treadup, for Matt. I'm Jeff Joniak. We're back at Soldier Field. Week 9, Tua and the Dolphins come to town pregame at 9, kickoff at noon, and that'll do it tonight. Have a great night, everybody. This is News Radio 105.9 WBBM.